President Biden wants to get tough on crime, but he might want to talk to his vice president. The Minnesota bail fund promoted by Kamala Harris during the George Floyd-related riots of 2020, you'll remember those, but recently helped secure the release of a repeat felon who just got charged with murder. Sean Michael Tillman shot and killed a passenger on a train platform after reportedly being released from jail three weeks prior, all thanks to the Minnesota Freedom Fund. That's the same group Harris promoted with this tweet. If you're able to, chip in now to help post bail for those protesting on the ground in Minnesota. Thanks to Harris's promotion, the group reportedly raised $35 million in just a few weeks. And this is not the first person to commit murder after being bailed out by the Freedom Fund. Greg, do you remember this? Yes. In June of 2020? Yeah, okay, so... Um... It's amazing when you when you compare the, these riots to January 6th, because the riots were this ongoing, terrifying nightly purge. If you were anywhere around it, it just sickened you. You thought the country was over and it didn't end. And the scary thing is people wouldn't talk about it. It's like you would go, you, you would say, what's going on? And they go, no, no, it's, you know, it's whatever, social justice, or they just laugh at you. No COVID. No co peaceful mostly, protests. mostly peaceful. January 6th, abominable riots. But so out of the ordinary, so odd, and such a one-off that everybody condemned it, right? But for some reason in the media, the impression is consistent nightly violence is preferable to one night of riots because it depends on who's doing it. There are some red hats there. They'll take that, you know, that day is far worse. But this is when you realize that the virtue signaling has a body count. You put a little sticker on your car that says BLM, that's fine. But to free killers... To feel to, so you could feel enlightened, that causes problems. I mean, we need to drop the freed felons off in front of the houses of the people who freed them. And if you object to that, you have to ask yourself why. Why do you have a problem with that? Because we got to live with it, right? As a judge, if this had been a case that you worked on, you must, <clears throat> you would have been furious. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me more. <laughs> Well, you know Wind what I love? She had tweeted, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not unwound, um, but she tweeted, if you're able to chip in the Minnesota Freedom Fund to help those protesting on the ground, let me tell you what this dirtbag was doing. He was indecently exposing himself and he was uh, masturbating in front of a woman. Now, that's not a guy who was protesting on the ground. <laughs> and so, you know, but she wanted him freed. She got him freed and he killed someone. It happens every day in America. People are being freed with no bail or being freed even though they've had guns. They can go out and get another gun. They go out and they kill somebody. Or this guy who did the sucker punch, uh, the level three sex offender, they took it down from attempted murder to misdemeanor. The, the whole concept, I mean, think about what's going on in this country. What's going on is that we are minimizing the victim and we are celebritizing and, and puffing up the criminal, saying we have to take care of them. We coddle the criminals and we ignore the victims. And that's what's going on today. And that is a direct result of, of, the, uh, of the Democrats, it just is, of their policies. Harold, this group, the Minnesota Freedom Fund, they said it was only $2,000 that they donated, which is, they say is a small amount compared to your average bail request of more than $58,000 and well under our daily bail cap. And they said that after they paid the bail, their post-release team, they have a team, uh, attempted to contact him as they do all our clients upon release, but it didn't seem to work this time. Look, this is, um, this is a horrible case. Uh, I cannot imagine for the life of anything that the vice president uh, would have thought that this was going to happen. I think when you say protesting, peaceful protesting, and I, I quarrel with you a little bit. I don't think you, you blame Democrats for, for all of this. I don't blame Republicans. Yeah, look at the crime in the Democrats' well, well, cities. Well, I don't blame every Republican for what happened on January 6th. Yeah. So, we, we, look, we just differ. I, I get it. I don't blame Kamala Harris for all this. Where I agree with you I wholeheartedly. Do. Fair. Where I agree with you wholeheartedly is that, that we need to be tougher on crime. We need to keep those behind bars who are, who are committing violent acts. Uh, but to try to blame Kamala Harris for this, I think, is, is, yeah. is slightly, is slightly uh, unfair. Certainly, per personally, not to blame, but the sentiment of releasing felons. I know you said you don't have much sympathy for the older felons, but... True. What about uh, the younger As a callback from the A block, the Attorney General of the United States, Ms. Law and Order, who had that reputation early, all of a sudden says, I'm so I feel so bad for the criminals. We've got to find a way to get them out. Crazy. The other thing is... The numbers must be undeniable, How, uh, Harold. You're the most uh, experienced, along with the judge, in politics. Oh, sorry, uh, everyone except me and Greg, uh, to run for office. <laughs> but the numbers must be horrific for the president of the United States to try to be a law and order president all of a sudden. Yeah. And it's not just the squad. They have ignored 
and not spoken out when it was to fund the police. And if just because you didn't say it, Mr. President, you didn't stop your party from saying it. And by the way, ask Cori Bush to defund the police. She'll tell you right now she wants to defund the police. You can't come out and say now you want to crack down when your whole history is you said nothing during those riots. You weren't horrified when cities abandoned because of the pandemic were wrecked and livelihoods were destroyed, especially on this block, the other block, and maybe your city block. So I think the points between law and order, between Republicans and Democrats, are like 15 points. And the president's got to close that gap or he's going to get, his party's going to get slammed on election day. But I think people don't have short-term memory loss. I think people remember what the party was on law and order. And the former president went crazy about this. He wanted to use special forces to go out there and grab our streets back. So you can't say that the, that the president of the United States was asleep at the switch. He was desperately trying to get these mayors to crack down on these criminals and these rioters. Okay, good talk. Up. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.